like branches and brushes because uh, they usually do the harvest it's after they uh, harvest for grapes. An interesting thing is actually Portugal exports a lot of its olive oil to countries like Spain and Italy and then it gets packaged and sold as Spanish olive oil or Italian olive oil. So it's actually a marketing problem is what they always say. They don't market Portuguese olive oil as well as they should. So guys, right now we are headed to Castelo Rodrigo. This is a really interesting town. It's medieval, but also um, its origins, the fortification around it, go back to the being built between the 8th uh, to the 12th century. It is, what's interesting is it's such an interesting representation of the different phases of Portuguese history. When we're talking about like 9th century, we're talking about the Moorish period, when uh, the North Africans came over and conquered this area. And then we also start getting into um, the Reconquista, right? When the, the Christian kings came back, reconquered the area. Medieval period, right? Where this is where everybody would live in this hilltop town until it became safer. And then you'll see that we'll pass the main city on our way up there. The people who live up in the Castel Rodrigo, in that small little fortified village are really doing tourism. You know, it's changed a lot. It's not where the main people were people would stay during the medieval times. And also an interesting one is that um, it also represents an interesting time period of the ex uh, expulsion of the Jews, what happened in the Spanish Inquisition. So Castel Rodrigo is um, one of the five, re when, when a, essentially when the King of Spain expelled the Jews in um, 1492, actually a lot of uh, the Portuguese king allowed five regions here to take to take them in. Which is really so there's evidence of like there's a rabbi house the old cistern has been considered to have been a synagogue so it's a really interesting part and actually the area around there marofa comes from a legend of when this time period happened that eventually the portuguese also expelled the jews or made them convert to christianity but here was an area where you had a lot of um, a, a good jewish community and so the marofa mountains that are just next to it. The legend goes that there was a, uh, a guy who settled from Spain, who's Jewish, and he had quite a bit of money. And so his daughter was his only heiress. And uh, because of that, a local knight, um, he came and he said, wow, I really want to meet this daughter. She's rich and I heard she's beautiful. And so when he hears about this daughter, uh, he finally gets the opportunity to meet her and they fall in love. But then what happens? Then the Portuguese king would like to expel uh, the Jewish from this area as well. And so he's like, oh, please convert to Christianity. So she does. And her name is Ofa. And so he's very happy that she converts to Christianity, but he calls her Omeofa. Omeofa. And so this sort of turns into Marofa. And that's the name of the mountains nearby. It's just kind of an interesting sort of the legend mixed with the history of what was happening in the area. Um, we're going to introduce you to your escort today as well, which is going to be Zay over here. Yes, the hand that's up here, I don't know if you can see. And he's going to actually be showing you through the village a little bit and pointing out some interesting things. But it's such an interesting period of time that we see there. So... We're going to get, drop you guys off, and you're actually going to walk through. So you're going to take all your stuff with you because the bus has to go. And we're going to walk through town for a little bit. I know those views are just spectacular up here. The walk will be about 15, 20 minutes. And then we're going to end up at the bikes. And at the bikes is where you guys are going to start riding. So imagine you guys are going to start riding around 9 o'clock. The bike ride is going to be... Uh, 50 kilometers or 30 miles. We think this is plenty of time to do it all if that is what you would like to do. You have a 1500 feet of elevation gain, a little bit more than that, but just around there. And the option is to miss the last nine miles and get picked up by either a van or the bus, depending on uh, logistics, and skip those last nine miles and go straight to the boat. So you could either do approximately 21 miles or 30 miles skipping last hill. So, basically, when you get out from Castelo Rodrigo, you have this descent, so you want to be careful going through. And it's just this incredible area.
is we're going to see almond trees. You'll pass the town Almendra, which means uh, almonds, which is really neat. And you're going to see, uh, if you keep looking out, especially on the first big hill, you're going to see a castle to your left hand side, another fortified era. Um, and you'll continue down, you have a really beautiful des descent uh, where you're seeing sometimes the river. And then that's when you're going to see the vans are going to be on the right hand side at about mile 21. And you can decide there if you want to keep going. But we recommend go for gold um, and conquer that five kilometer hill, go through the town, and then you're going to be doing another descent back to the valley to Pocinho. So today, once we get in, we have all aboard at 1230. Seeing where this mic goes. At 12.30, um, we need to be back on the ship. Uh, lunch will start also around that time. And so, lunch will just be on the ship, just like uh, this morning, it'll look something similar. And then, we are gonna have a big long sail, which is gonna be approximately, you know, we leave around one o'clock, and we're gonna be arriving, we believe, into Pignon around 6.45 or so. Mm. So, this is a great opportunity to relax, read, enjoy, um, and just take it in because we don't actually get many other days of sailing. This is one of the only few, and so that w otherwise we're usually meeting the boat down river. And um, yeah, it's great to hang out on the sun deck. You'll find what's really funny is that we'll go through two locks. Uh, one of them is the second highest of the Douro at 33 meters, the Valera Dam. And then also there'll be moments where we the boat because it goes under low hanging bridges, the whole sun deck collapses, like they make it collapse. So they'll kick everybody off and so that they can go under these bridges. So it's something really neat to see. Yeah, it's very, very cool. And this is the area of the river. You're gonna see some of the most narrow parts as well. Very dramatic scenery. So then after our long sail, as soon as we dock, we're actually gonna be trans, we're gonna be taking the bus to dinner tonight. But the dinner is at a winery called Quinta de la Hoza. So this is where we're going to actually do a tour first, then have a cheeky glass, and then head to dinner. And so yeah, we're just going to plan on meeting whenever the ship docks. So it's scheduled around 6.45, so usually we're hanging out there watching them do, you know, get into Pignon. Pignon itself, we're actually going to be there for two nights, if everything goes according to plan. And so you will have some time tomorrow to check out the town. It's an interesting town because it's it's very small, and it's really still an agricultural town, right? So it has, um, it's like has a shops that have, sell agricultural goods. Um, a lot of farmers are going through. So even though it's become more touristy, and there's like a, a five-star hotel and whatnot, it's very much still. There's not a whole a whole lot in terms of geared towards tourism. A little bit, but not a ton. Um, but we're going to be there for two nights. Definitely.